Call a meeting to order. We need to elect the officers the first thing, otherwise we don't have anybody to run. Second. Don't need a second. Don't need a second. Any other motions? Okay. Declare the motions closed. I move that we first declare uh, ballot ballot for yes. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Same sign. All right. Now we need a, a department for a vice chair nominations. I don't even know who the vice chair is. I oh, I nominate uh, Johnny for the the vice chair again. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Nominations closed for vice chair. All in favor? Right. Uh, I oppose. Same sign. Do you have a secretary? We need one. Oh, we don't. We always don't. We have to elect one. Yeah. We don't have to. Yeah. I think one move approval of the agenda as presented. All in favor? I oppose. Same sign. No second. Uh, Approval of the minutes of the previous meeting of March 3rd. Need a motion on that. Moved. By Joe. Second. By John. All in favor? Aye. Both same sign. Any supervisors not seated? Brian, do you want to? Well, that's the first. Okay. <laughs> That's right, this is being recorded, you know. <laughs> Organizational matters. Committee duties. That would be Vince. Are you handling that portion of it? Organization. Well, it's uh it was the amended it's the, the amended agenda that you amended. You can see it, huh? It was just put on. I, I, yeah, I, I think that's so, given that you haven't completed the full organizational meeting at the county board that will set the rules of order, that's really what will delineate, you know, the duties and responsibilities of this committee. But you generally understand that it's basically public works and public safety. And you tried, at least in our proposal for the rules of order, that you're going to see at tonight's county board meeting to leave everything within the division model so that most of the time the sheriff's department and Mo can report to this committee as their main committee. Obviously, there's going to be some overlap with certain things, and that's unavoidable. But generally speaking, everything that's under... Um, Mo's purview is going to generally report to this committee and the same thing for the sheriff's department. Okay, that's, that we don't have to ask that. I, I thought that was a good question. I hope that I have an explanation. Okay, I'm saying you're the highway commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Are we not supposed to Taking over parks and recs? We don't know that yet. Okay. We haven't been assigned that until tonight. That's the what they, That was discussed. Yes. Uh, but I think after evaluating and, and looking at the, the needs and the opportunities that it would stay within environmental services. The one question that we may have in this respect that this was was the uh the duties of our A T V trail uh committee that's being developed. And it was my assumption that 
that we here in a uh, uh, public session highway, we're going to assume the duties are assumed the the uh, hazard reporting from that committee. Well, I, I at this point there is a trails advisory panel being created right. through the environmental services, which is going to include all recreational activities, not just ATVs, UTVs, but bicycles, horses, walking, that type of thing. Uh, but you know, in discussions with both uh, with Mo and Bob, uh, the thought was it was most applicable to stay in environmental services. Johnny. Yeah, I, I thought that was over probably the last, almost the last two years. I, I thought that was uh, more or less a trend and, and the point here and there that it feels that that should be included under IFA and that the environmental phase was so overloaded that they were going to try and get that down to even one we a month of time. Create a better balance. I sure think that it fails and would work real good in our highway department, in our structure. I think, I think you're correct. Actually, up to this point, we've never had a committee from each of these representatives. Represent what? Represent a representation of APB members from ATV clubs and stuff ever participating in any activities related to expansion of, of the uh, you know, the funding and things like that that are normally uh, affiliated with an unorganized organization that has a specific interest. You know, ATV trails don't have a lot of interest in the Sour Trail because they make their exclusive basically by everything we've heard so far. So the ATVs get a, as a concession to, you know, uh, to the trying to disrupt the Stour Trail and the walking and the biking and things like that. The ATV club had been started through this committee for a period of about a year until Doug did a lot of work and contacted a lot of people, as did Joe, and we have I mean, uh, the main leaders of ATV uh, writers available now through this committee to develop but for funding specifically for ATV ATV and uh, we're trying to form a committee in that respect because it's never been before. Right. And that that committee that committee has not been developed. I bet you if you go to your recreational committee, you don't have an ADP or representative on that committee. Well it hasn't officially started yet, you're right. But that but that was the, the plan was to get representatives from each stakeholder group to participate. And then our concern was if you have this, it, it, so that we don't get into a situation like we did with the Sour Trail, where you get everybody arguing, you know, this stakeholder group fighting this stakeholder group, and they're, they're total opposite. They won't even talk. Correct. So we decided, what if we came up with a committee which had stakeholders from each group starting to work together, building trust and relationships, with the idea that we would create a total overall or overarching plan for the county. And that wouldn't just be ATV because it's for walkers, but rather you would say in our whole county, how can we work together? Maybe, maybe ATVs and another stakeholder group would have this geography or this area. And then maybe you can blend it with other stakeholders having uses in other parts. So that their work they're coordinated as opposed to everybody fighting for the same thing. Absolutely agree with that with one exception. Okay. We're going to be sitting here two years from now talking about the same thing. Have to accomplish nothing because specifically because of the adverse I mean the diversity of the people. 
And that's what happened in the Stellar Park. Snowmobiles, walkers, uh, bikers, ATVs, horses. I guarantee you can't get a consensus on that. Even today, and that's only five different little groups yeah. talking about one specific recreational activity or the use of that. Right. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. I just wanted to bring in a couple of the things that I see as a problem, just what you're saying, in that at our environmental meeting, I brought up representation. Well, you've got a northern group on ATVs and a southern group, and you have a county, and they only want one representative. Well, there you're leaving out these diverse groups because that's a big county and we look at southern and northern whole county differently. And yet we're only gonna have one representative. So I just I can't see that group working. I sorry, I just can't. I don't either. I, I don't think you that it'll work for any progress in ATV interest. It's a special group, they have special funding, they have special uh unique uh uh, funding available to them through their activity, through their state organized group, their license fees. And I'm sure that we're not going to, they're not going to be sharing that with, with bicycle people that have been adverse to them all along. And the horse people have a specific, they have a specific location. They, I can't imagine that we can incorporate the Snowmobile, or uh, if there's ever any snow, into that group up in uh, Sterling Town, which uh, which is a well organized group of horse people. That they've got all kinds of areas up there. To go. They would prefer, I'm sure, that we have a specific trail for ATVs and user ATVs that they will not, you know, want to interfere on, and uh, vice versa. I mean, there's so many, many conflicting uh, activities and interests in those groups that I don't think we're going to ever move forward uh, until we do like Doug and Joel and this group and public protection uh, started. We had a meeting with the northern, the southern group and the northern group. A very active people. One of Last up, uh, people up there in ATV, how many hundreds of miles of I mean, he, he traveled to Mayfield County, Washburn County, Sawyer, all through the north, Douglas County. They, they have regular trail rides. And he's very interested in becoming active in, in a local group, specifically to Dr. Forrest, people have to do that. Woods when they cut down and these trails where they take logs out, they take them to utilize. There's a number of different things. There's funding for those things available, but we don't have an organized group in the county that can uh, receive that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, Sawyer County's got over a million dollars just open up their, their uh, stuff, uh, ATV group. There was pay back, sort of. Would this seem like something that this committee and environmental service committee representatives could talk to the executive committee and say, what's the best approach to take this? Um, because I, I know that one of the reasons environmental services was, was maintaining the, the trails and parks was because of their connection to the forestry and, and, and land usage and so on. And the thought being, if we have a comprehensive view of this county, what's the best way to help all groups? That, you know, and if you think big picture, you know, which is kind of our goal, job is what are the goals? And, and if we can say, you know what, if we can make Polk County the county where people a diverse array of, of outdoor activities, but that's what we are, right? And this county is outdoor activity. If we can have something that shows a coordinated plan, would it be better than if each individual group, you know, went after what they could get 
and did it that way. That, and I think that was the whole purpose of this plan was to start small. And I, I think, and I think, you know, Mr. Rowdy, uh, all the details of that committee haven't been decided yet for the ad hoc group, but I think they were going to have more than one person representing uh, each cause, if I understand and recall. That's not what was said in environmental law. As far as yeah. he, he said, one, Can I ask one person. Okay. Now we can ask the chairman of the executive. Uh, Can I I would ask him. Well, yeah, you know, if you put up the signs and everything to the, to the trails and, and different things that you're in charge of all the signage and, and the sheriff's in charge of, you know, all the, all the things that go on in the trail, you know, our guidelines for the speed limits and all these. All these things, any violations of the trail. So it, it fits in perfectly, I think, with the highway and other things that we're in charge of. And this is just a shock to me because I think this has been talked about for the last, the whole last session that the, that part of them was going to be uh, public protection and highway because it's your analysts are saying, okay, if you put the vote here, I think it would be five to nothing in favor of it. And I know the environmental committee, uh, I don't know, some of them just cut this cut because they had too much. And, and so, you know, this is, I think, kind of been the trouble in the county. They should, everything should start from grassroots. We're the ones that represent the people. And they should start from grassroots and follow this up to your level, you know. And it seems to me that that is here been the consensus that this should be where we fit as part of the possibility. And I, I would like to see that go on to the executive Don't make that decision not right. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Chair, I have kind of like two, two questions. One, I thought that Parks and Rec was going to this committee to take the ease off environmental services because they're meeting twice a month. Some of their meetings are five, six hours long. Oh. And the other thing is, is that Easter Sunday, I called this one guy because I got the some of these four-wheelers are just a whizzing by my place. And this is the guy that's in charge of one of the ATT folks on here. And he was out having a picnic with four other people on their UTV stuff. And I had a good talk with him and tell him to tell the people to start slowing down and stuff. And he, he told me he actually, the week before, turned two people in in a sheriff's office for speeding, which the ATV clubs have monitored. And they can't give tickets, but they can call the sheriff's department and put, give them the numbers. So it's I do a good job of police. Yeah, I think it's very vital, too, that, you know, we involve all them. And I would like to see that, apart from that, come here. We meet an hour and we're done. Okay. These days are hours that I ask Corporation Council based on the of the border. How do these types of things get allocated? So it would be appropriate then at tonight's county board meeting when we're talking about the rules of order to discuss and decide at that level whether that should be switched over and placed underneath this committee's purview. If that happens, then then it's fine. If at some point, uh, if it doesn't happen, then the executive committee can be called to decide whether or not they're going to, um, you know, switch who's going who's going to be addressing those things. But that would be appropriate for tonight. So normally, this would have happened at last week's or several, whatever, the first county board of this new term. 
and and that didn't happen, so that's why things are just up in the air until then. We will wait until tonight and see if anything develops. Otherwise, the board is set. I prefer to go to the executive committee anyway because I think we'll get more done than uh, trying to explain that to another uh, 11 people or 12 of them. I'm not sure that that uh, Doug understands it personally either. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat confused as to where. I was under the impression that the ATVs were going to be represented where they've never been represented before, except at county board meetings or they feel this this place absolutely packed them with uh, advocates. And now they are a well organized group and they're they're building on a regular basis and I think they need some special representation at this time to help them get organized in this county and start bringing in some of those recreational dollars that are going to Barron County, Douglas County, Burnett County, uh and all around us. It's uh it's unbelievable to, to go over and watch those groups in the areas by the dozens of them. And now uh, they can't go to the bars and things like that anymore, but, or restaurants, but they are still going through and Here's they the need some, need some representation. I would like uh, to move under number seven, uh, ATV UTV discussion. I would like to move, uh, that the highway uh, our committee that we uh, we research changing the trail responsibility to our highway de highway department as it is in ATV UTVs yes. traffic not yes. snowmobiles not anything else all, all the recreational all recreational like S motorcycle or off road yep. uh, bicycles yep. Well, I guess I don't understand that motion. Uh, I, I made a move that we we accept that responsibility, and I want it to be in our, our minutes. Oh, so you want to... Uh, and then go on to then... Go on to the county board that we have. And, right? and to the executive committee with our recommendation that we have. Is go to the executive committee with it? Yeah. Okay, we've got a motion on it. Did you want to try to figure out what that says? I think you got it. You want to read it back to us? And recreation and recreational. For right. decision. Right. Okay. Everybody understand? Hey, you got it? Pardon? Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. You've got to have a second oh, board. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you want to discuss it? Good <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. It's a... I'm sorry. Hey, no. I'm just curious, uh, Mo, I'd like your feedback, the sheriff's feedback on how you guys feel about that. I mean, that's something new for you, right? And that's additional responsibility and, and, uh. Oh, I'll, I'll come in. Okay. Um, you know, at Sheriff's Office, we do rep patrol. We have DNR funded both snowmobile and ATV programs. In addition, we teach the boat snowmobile and ATV safety programs. So, um, we're, we're familiar with that particular user group, and I think it would make perfect sense for this group to oversee uh, the, the creation of more ATV and recreational trails. Um, also, in reference to bicycles, in the past we've also you know, run up and down the derby to to check and bike passes occasionally as well. So it was all fallen into our laps as far as the, the enforcement in the recreational county, so we take a role in that. So it really isn't any more of a, a problem for us. Yeah. 
We do. Yep. As, as a reference to the signs, I mean, the signs we installed were not on all, was on the trails on the county highway system, being that it was on the county highway system. Um, we didn't install, we did not install any signs on the Danny Dancer or any of our other trail signs. Um, I think there needs to be a little more debate on this because the forestry would have to be in the same, would come along with that as the forestry is part of 30% um, paid out of that funding source on that. Um, so, not quite prepared to speak at that at this time. That's why I, I included recreation like twenty percent of the time. Can That's why I included recreational activities in my motion because you have a recreational officer and you know patrols the lakes and everything else. So it's just the perfect fit. Okay. Uh, Do you have any other questions, okay. Steve? Uh, any other discussion on the motion to pass this to the executive committee? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Okay, that should move on. And that would take care of of uh, number eight. Okay. Organization, I want to see. Where are we? Update from the Highway Commissioner, number six. I just put an update on what's going on with highway right now. Um, in the surface transportation program, that's the federal program, state program, that's an 80 20 split. Um, currently, we have four bridges in there in the past program uh, Town of McKinley on uh, 270th Avenue. Apple River on 165th Avenue, Clear Lake on 30th Street, and Town of Beaver on 40th Street there. Those bridges are due for replacement um, near 2021 and 22. They're in design right now, going through the process with that program. Also in the last program, we have SCP. The rural pro uh, project is County Road M, nigh to, the, nigh to the South County line. That is still on schedule for a let February 2021. Aiden should go down next spring on that one, so that would be a good one to get off our board. In the new program, we got awarded four projects. In the new program, that I'm currently working with the state on negotiating the uh, service agreements with. That's the replacement for the bridge on K. That's for a replacement for the bridge on County B and Atlas. Um, that's also for the deck replacement for the Church Road bridge there over the Apple River. That got awarded to us. And also, in the rural system, I was able to get County Road F from Amory to Double P in there for pavement replacement. Now I'm working with the state on getting County K, the church uh, redecking, and possibly County F into the low-risk program, which puts a little more work on me to streamline that process and hopefully cut about a year to two years off of construction on those jobs. So we'll try to be fast-tracking those jobs. As soon as I sign the agreements with the state, but we're still negotiating on costs on those, those ones there. State projects currently, uh, U.S. Highway 63, uh, county line up to J. That was scheduled going 2023. That's been pushed off now with the state to 2026. State Highway 65 has been pushed back from 2023 to 2027 currently. So we're, as you see and you drive it, we're putting some Band-Aid patches on that now, trying to see if we can make it last another seven years before something happens. Uh, we opened up bids last week on our materials for construction. Asphalt's down about 10%. So that'll, that'll help out in the bottom line on our construction projects. Um, with the state rates this year, um, our main projects right now are we're pulverizing K from 65 to double P. We're doing a mill and overlay up on E, E4, uh, chip sealing W 
section on W, a section on I, and a section on E, and a mill and overlay on I-4. That's from Georgetown Hall. This year, those are kind of our main jobs right now. The west end of N up there in Cushing, that's going to get some uh, pavement spray patching and overlay just some minor repairs on that stuff right now. Uh, the summer road school has been moved from June to August 10th, 11th, and 12th. Your registration should have been emailed to you by the county clerk. If not, let me know. I'll make sure you guys get that. Registration is due by July 12th. Um, bridge inspections are, uh, have been completed in April for all um, 59 bridges we have in the, in the county, local and county bridges. Which brings me to my next topic is the bridge on County H there over the Apple River just north of the Browtine. Um, Ten years ago, the center piling in that bridge is, is starting to sag, which causes uh, the bridge kind of to tip down. About ten years ago, seven years ago, we shimmed that bridge up to prevent that, but that center piling continues to lower. So in working with the state and the bridge engineers on what we can do to fix that, we're going to try to shim it this year again. But in lieu of trying to post that bridge at 10 tons, we're going to lower the speed limit over that bridge down to 35 miles an hour. So a short stretch of Highway H there is going to go down to 35 miles an hour to keep traffic from pounding that bridge down. So we'll be looking for some enforcement out there on that one. Um, it was either that or post that bridge down at 10 tons, which we couldn't get. You couldn't get a pickup truck or ground bales across it at that point. So structurally, the piers have come in in inspections being okay, but it continues to sag. So. The earliest I could get into the replacement program or get that bridge replaced would probably be five to eight years with state funds, unless we did it with our own funds. So that's probably the, the biggest news on that one coming down. So those signs will be going up in the next week or two, lowering that speed limit to 35 miles an hour, just for about eighth of a mile either side of the bridge on that one. Um, on the agenda here, it says uh, COVID staffing at highway. Currently, we have two employees using the child care, one off with medical, uh, one gentleman off with just normal workman's comp, one with light duty, and we've hired four, or excuse me, of our four seasonals, we've, we've reduced down to two seasonal positions, and we have two gentlemen working night shifts due to um, daycare issues with that, with some of our update on staffing. COVID. Gearing up for summer projects right now. Got our first load of CRS2 oil in for patching. Starting to ramp up uh, that, getting the sanders off the trucks. Hopefully it doesn't snow again. You have any questions? I, I know you ordered all the way at this time. And how does that look for coming season? Prices right, last year were about eighty dollars. We haven't got the new pricing list yet. If the state's going to remain with the same contract, we go with the state contract on those. On um, the last two years, two uh, winters have been a struggle for us, just with the harshness of one and then the shortage of salt. Um, so where we had long hours and equipment hours on one winter, there was a Salt shortage, so we didn't get all our salt into the previous year. So we had to order it all in one season versus trying to spread it out over two budget cycles. But right now, it's it's looking similar to this year. Not much changes. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Have, have we made any progress as far as uh, Friday afternoon being open for the line quarry? I think we had that on the agenda before that we thought for six months. We had, I think we asked you for, for six months to April to October if we could, if we could be open 
five we, eights. We've been working every every week with the contractors. We're open four tens right now, and on during the week we're in contact with the haulers to see if they need us to open on Fridays. Um, and we've been open several Fridays now. Sometimes till noon, sometimes sometimes till one, sometimes till three, depending on the volume that's coming in. Last week we only had one individual that wanted to haul three loads on Fridays. So we were not open on Friday last week. That's. I know uh, some landscapers have called me, and I had a call just before a meeting today from a farmer. And the, the big equipment that these farmers got nowadays, they just got to keep it going. He said, like, uh, Frontier Ag there in Osceola, so they instituted a, a $50. They have somebody in call, and it cost $50. And so he said he needed a coupling for his planter. And he said, I was glad to pay the $50. He said, I was there at 7 o'clock. And he said, the guy that came in, he worked till 7 o'clock that night. And everybody had to pay $50 just to come and get a part, but they were glad to do it. I mean, that just shows you when they got these big 24 uh, row equipment and all that. They, they, we just need to be there for the farmers, really. And the lime haulers, and I talk to these ones, and again, and, uh, it, it would just be a standard. Uh, seems to be another four hours there on Fridays. I know when we talked it over and when we had uh, adjusted guys to have your weekends, well, then they worked our Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were different shifts. Like you, like you said, you're adjusting somehow on night shift and everything, and, and we do. We, 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 we pick up a lot more business. To, yeah, well, we know that, and it, it's hard to call on that, but if they knew they were open at 4 o'clock on Friday, it would be a tremendous help. Well, we're trying to manage that with the budget and how that works and try to make it so that we're not losing money on it. Yeah, top ground idea is that an after-hours surcharge is eat at line after hours. You know, we try to, there's truckers that like the 10 hour day because they can haul more loads during that day. They do. Um, you know, we, we try to accommodate everyone we can during our hours, uh, but it makes it, it, it we're never going to please everyone on it. And my, my biggest fear is that we're open four hours on Friday or five hours. If we extend our hours and we're paying overtime on these hours, someone can call a supervisor and say, well, I'd like to haul on Saturday. Can you be open on Saturday for us now? And it's just, we're trying to get them in there. Um, we run into the same scenario where truckers want to haul on, you know, we're open 6.30 or 4.30. They don't, they don't show up to the quarry till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock to start hauling their loads. You know, those are hours of operation. That's from a highway perspective. We run into the same thing with trap rocks. It goes at 3.30, and I have to account, I can't get product after 3.30, so I have to pre-haul that, stage it somewhere else, so I have it after 3.30. Um, we're, we work with them on Fridays. We try to make it what we can, so that was lucrative for us also, so we're not wasting it, but we've been trying our best to work with them all. We're very happy with the supply. Here's your That's what we talk about. Mr. Chair. Could I just make one comment? Uh, and as you recall, I think it was last fall when I just started, we talked about that we'd be open on Fridays. Right. And we talked about, okay, from a business perspective, what makes the most sense? This was our first attempt at it. And, and I think Mo did a pretty good job, but really of, we tried it and we got almost through the entire ag season for the spring where we, we really didn't have many complaints. And then the last weekend, I think, is when the complaints started coming in. And so, I, I you know, I look at that and say, okay, what can we learn from this? And can we adapt or can we adjust or come up with another strategy going forward? So I think Mo did a really good job, but we learned from it. Was it was a perfect no. And, and now we can say, what can we do differently or better going forward? Do I have anything else? Thanks. Thanks.
Well, I've got a report that I'm going to hand out here, and we'll talk about some of the things we've done in the last couple months. Yes, it is. Thank you, Don. On the second page there, you'll see a picture of a deputy with a mask on. Um, we've had to adapt, obviously, working in a pandemic situation. Um, I'd like to point out that through this pandemic, the state has provided us very little uh, protective equipment. Uh, we have had to source it on our own, and we've had so many great acts of kindness from businesses in this county. Um, Unity School, for example, donated um, 100 of these N95 masks so that deputies were equipped properly. Um, we've really had to get creative in how we got our deputies properly equipped. Um, the 45th Parallel Distillery in New Richmond provided us roughly 11 gallons of hand sanitizer that they changed from making vodka to making this hand sanitizer. So that's another example how, you know, we've had to find a source for this product. It wasn't, it wasn't this magic wand from the state and they brought us all this great stuff. We've really had to be resourceful. And this county's done a fantastic job. Our public health department, working with them, has been fantastic. Um, they came over and fit tested all the deputies, got them trained properly for using that mask, which is a requirement. Um, we've had very good success working through this situation. We've, we've tried, the goal was to keep our level of service virtually the same. We didn't scale back our law enforcement. We have been out working very hard, but we, we felt we could do it safely when we had the right equipment, and that's the approach we took. We thought that people seeing law enforcement like they normally do would create a sense of calm in the county, and we, and we feel that's been effective. Uh, part of this, the picture right below that is, it looks like a scene out of Alaska State Troopers, but it actually occurred here. Uh, we caught a couple homicide suspects in the inner area, and they were wanted out of the state of Kentucky, so we arranged to meet the Kentucky State Police at the New Richmond Airport, and they took custody of those inmates once they had waived their extradition. So we, we transported those individuals to the airport. They landed their plane, took custody of them, and off they flew. So it's kind of a neat, something that doesn't happen every day in full town. Um, the next picture there, uh, the drug work. I cannot say enough about the drug unit in Polk County. We have, you know, with the unanimous county board approval adding that drug investigator position, we have just been um, on it. And, you know, normally when you find methamphetamine, you find it in these little tiny gem packs. Well, we've been recovering pounds of methamphetamine. We had uh, a five-pound seizure from one individual in our county that is now facing federal drug trafficking charges as a result of the work that we've done. Uh, we've recovered cocaine. We've done over 60 search warrants since January. We've made 68 felony drug cases in Polk County. Um, and, and like I say, this is going on every day. We're, we have a group of dedicated uh, investigators that get out there and hit it. And we also get assistance from the St. Cray Valley Drug Task Force. And we like working with that group. Uh, they're a good group to work with. In addition to that, they had all the mess. He also had a bunch of stolen firearms and stolen property that we covered on that one. So it was a pretty big case. That, that one really caught the eye of the federal government. They were interested in that. Okay. Training has been an issue because of the pandemic. We don't send our people out of county for training right now. So we're trying to get as much of the training knocked out online so that we can meet the state training requirements. Every deputy is required to get a minimum of 24 hours of in-service uh, for fiscal year. And we're going to meet that, but it's taken a little creativity. We've had to go over some online training. Uh, finally, I would just like to mention that we've had a little change at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, Chad Roberts, you know, left, and he's now our, uh, I guess, Chad, what is the title? <laughs> director. director of General Government. Um, I liked it better when it was Chief Deputy, quite honestly. But, so I'm, I'm happy for Chad, and he does have uh, some big shoes to fill over with our agency. And I'm excited that his skills are going to be passed on to all the county agencies, because he, he certainly did great things for us. Um, with his vacancy, I've appointed uh, Deputy Don Burroughs to be the interim chief deputy. And uh, Don's been with the Sheriff's Office for a long time, and I think he's going to do uh, he's been doing an outstanding job here in the interim. So we'll be we'll be filling this vacancy in the next month uh, permanently. We're working towards the process on that. 
other than that, um, we're, you know, we're, we're working really hard to stay on budget, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, I have nothing real negative to report. It's been a, a good year so far for the Sheriff's Office. Right? Yeah, I would like to ask uh, Paul Pete. Yeah, I would like to ask Paul Pete about the budget on behalf of the Sheriff and Don. So, you know, the Sheriff's Office went to a trial. Uh, new schedule in the union negotiations, and I'll let Don speak to that. But through that schedule, we were at uh, actually negative one percent uh, on our overtime compared to last year. We actually knocked that overtime down a little bit with that schedule. On the budget right now, it looks like the sheriff's office is over about one percent on overtime. They're actually not. That's the increased drug enforcement activity that's reimbursed by a grant. But the caveat I want to make the committee aware of to give Don and the sheriff some cover when this comes up towards the end of the year is that that grant in the past, the sheriff's office in Polk County has drawn the lion's share from the task force. Last year, I think it was 36000 in overtime that we pulled from that grant. We just got noticed Friday, and I let Don and the sheriff be aware of it, that that money is starting to dry up in the form of state aids for this year. So they're going to be faced with a very tough option of, you know, they keep chugging along, but there's overtime attributed to the narcotics enforcement that doesn't get reimbursed by the grant or not keep chugging along. So I just want to make you guys aware as the budget rolls around and all that. You know, the way they were set up, they were running actually below budget on overtime, even though they're doing so much enforcement-wise right now. This is kind of throwing a kink in it, and I just don't want it blowing back on Don until the end of the year like he screwed something up with the budget. It's been managed very well. It's just a change beyond their control, and I want you guys aware of it as the year progresses since I just came in. The way the drug culture works, it's not a, you can't say we're only going to do drug work between noon and 4 o'clock today because it, it, it sometimes starts out that way, and then 12 hours later you're still on the job. You're still doing another search warrant. It's like a domino effect. It seems like you take one, and then it just goes right down the line. So, um, again, we have a really group of dedicated dedicated individuals, and we're, we're hitting it really hard. Thank you, Chair. I, I just thank you, like to congratulate you, uh, especially on that, uh, with some suspects in Amory. When you get somebody with a high level like that, it gives you kind of a feeling that you don't forget, don't it? I, I remember I had a paper route in and so we'd, we'd meet every morning with, or it was, uh, Mr. Blanchard was the chief in Osceola. So we ran a group one in the morning and we came in there and just, I want everybody to leave. So we were kind of scared and he, uh, he seen a out of state license from Pennsylvania. And those are the things you do that are extra, you know. And he checked that license out here for somebody that was a whole lot of kids. He just walked up to him under his hand, cuffed him. And, and on that time, we confiscated his car and the county uh, pulled his car and everything. Those things mean a lot. Thank you. Hey, anybody else? Uh, here. Uh, I'd like to condemn you or commend you. Thank you for doing the job that you're doing and stuff. And bringing Mr. Roberts, I don't know, but him and I get along good. He's, he's, he's excellent no matter what he does. But I have one question for you on the laws of bicycles. Now, going down county road or township road, they're not designated bike routes. Can they do that? Yep. I was back in Wood the other day. One went by and you could hear the neighbor. He was not happy. He was cussing at him. <laughs> but then I was going Wally World back home. I went past south there on 35 going towards Oscar Dresser. Right by the interstate there I'm looking at what the heck is that? Here there's, you've got two 
planes going that way and one coming here. There's somebody, a guy riding right in the center lane, right in the middle. Well, I would say, you know, anybody riding a bike on our county road, you, you got to be careful because, uh, and we've unfortunately had um, bicycle car accidents. Uh, in fact, we had one, uh, in a, we had a fatality, a bicycle that got hit uh, down on County Road M. Um, yeah. But I can, I can say that it is legal to ride out on our county roads on a bicycle, but it is extremely dangerous because, like being on a motorcycle, you're not as visible, you're much smaller, harder to see, and, and, and there's not a lot of room, as you know, on the county roads on the shoulder. I mean, it's, uh, well, it is a, it is a dangerous situation, but people do it, and, you know, we just preach like everything else, try to do it as safely as possible, wear bright colored clothing. No offense to mold, road, the uh, shoulders on county road out. <laughs> well, thank you. Great. Same as a pedestrian, a pedestrian can walk. You can walk on the side of the road. That's cool. Yeah. How many points do you have? Comments. Yeah, but I would also welcome Mr. Warren Hall for the. Yeah, we have yeah. to. Yeah. Welcome back. Hi, <laughs> Owen. Uh, certainly welcome. Thanks. But anyway, uh. I mean, shut up. Hey, uh. Have anything for the, uh. Next meeting, other than hopefully we'll be addressing some of the ATV, UTV issues that come out of the executive committee that uh, Ryan is up to date on this now, so we can don't have to twist his arm on what's going on. <laughs> Anything that you might want to add for next? Uh, other than that, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Real quick, on your work plan, I noticed that you have a tour of the jail scheduled in June. The jail is presently on restricted access because of COVID-19. That'll need adjusted on your work plan later in the year when Don is comfortable with it. Well taken. Yeah, we may have to get innovative and even a virtual tour or something. I don't know how we're going to do it. They're really trying to limit the outside impact on the jail. They're doing a really great job right now, so... We're going to have to find some way. So if the fence for the farmer wants to do, we got to do a tour. That's you, Mr. Rowdy. Nothing to do around the tour. So we'll try to find a way to make it work, but we might do it to higher audience. We could have done it. Sounds great. Just so we comply with the mandate from the state. Check it once a year. We'll be fine. Whatever you come up with. Okay. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. A couple of months ago, we have that mandate for uh, these strikes are out and for... We didn't do anything on that. We passed it to the county board, but that doesn't... There's nothing happening. Nothing happened on that. No, it hasn't been brought to the county board. No, it hasn't been brought up at all. Not to... Not except at our board, and it was passed to the county board, and... Due to the other complications and things that we have, I don't think there's anything pending right now. I think they'll be coming up in the future. We, we kind of delayed those things as the right. virus broke out. And, and since we got people aren't able to come in like they used to, we said let's let's take those issues and move them back a month or so until we get you know right. things back to normal. And we, yeah, I don't know if it'll be up. But it's, it has nothing has that been acted on as far as I mean, we have our executive meeting. We're going to have the resolution on the, as an agenda item. The one on uh, the recreation in this committee. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Everything covered. Anything else? Entertain a motion. Okay. Entertain a motion to be to adjourn. Oh. Uh, in favor? I oppose. Same sign. We are.